I never stopped loving her, even after my suspicions were aroused. A few strange things happened that hadn't happened in our entire 15 years of marriage, and my spidey senses were activated. Her outfits and new look changed significantly when a new boss took over the office. Our sex life suddenly changed for the better. She was now actually provoking me to have sex, something she had never done before. More frequent text messages at night and late night meetings after work were now commonplace. Of course, she had perfect excuses for everything, but for some reason my jealous nature was not satisfied. I asked the private firm not to tell me anything until the file was ready. I didn't want anything to change between us and prayed that I was just a paranoid husband. After three months of investigation, I was given a folder with news that I hoped would never come. After reviewing the video, audio, and photos, I told Mac, my attorney, to have the divorce papers drawn up and ready for me by Wednesday afternoon. I planned to show up for their date Thursday night while they thought I was out of town. I had planned a nice surprise for the couple. It still amazed me how she could have thought she could get away with it. Annie knows me better than anyone. She knows how intuitive, strong-willed, and relentless I am. Heck, she saw how ruthless I can be when I took over the company and ruthlessly destroyed my competitors. Now I own a controlling interest in a major transportation company. The truckers and truck drivers have a lot of respect for me and I treat them well. I know they have my back if they ever need me. I give Annie everything and have always treated her like a queen and she knows it. She tells her friends and family how wonderful I am and how embarrassing it is that I'm crazy about her, but she also tells them how much she loves it. That's why this question is still bugging me, even during these past few hours. Why? Why would she risk everything she has for an affair, have an affair with her boss for sex? Why? That was my most troubling question. Annie had always been a wonderful mother and wife, and it was really hard to understand. Sex was frequent and satisfying. I guess not satisfying enough. She took care of the house and worked full time as an executive assistant at a local technology company. To this day, I would never have thought she could have had a lover. My name is Luciano Rossetti, and I have been Annie's husband for 15 years. We have two teenage daughters who still love their daddy. I am what you would call an alpha male who doesn't take crap from anyone, but treats his wife like the special prize I knew she was. In our relationship, I let her take charge and feel powerful up to a point. Thanks to genetics, I inherited my father's physical attributes. I'm two meters tall, 120 kilograms of muscle, an imposing figure, but I'm a gentle giant until provoked. Annie has seen this a few times when we've been out together and she's been hit on by some tough guys. Annie is a sex doll with big breasts, long, sexy legs, thin waist, and an angelic face. Guys are always staring at her and flirting with her, which drives me crazy. One of my flaws is my sneaky, jealous streak, which, once it activates, is hard to control. Over the years, I've learned to contain my anger, but I haven't mastered that talent yet. Anyway, Annie has seen my jealous outbursts twice in the last 15 years, and she knows what I'm capable of. Twice when we were out, some assholes tried to ask her to dance after she had already told them she was with me. Both times, they didn't take no for an answer and dragged her out of the booth while I sat there watching. They must have thought that since they were big, tough guys, I would just sit there and let them take my wife. Big mistake. The first time it happened was when we were out for a walk, discussing our girls and having fun together. I was stunned when this guy had the nerve to grab her arm and pull her out of the stall. Before he took his first step onto the dance floor, I jumped out of my booth and got between him and my wife. In a quick motion, I dislocated his shoulder and pushed him into our booth where he squirmed in pain. Taking Annie, I left the premises. Another time, it was the same thing, but that guy had a broken wrist and a concussion as we were leaving the bar again. Like I said, I don't take crap from anyone, and my biggest problem is jealousy, which again brings up the question of this affair. Since she knows me, why would she do that? Date night is Thursday. I've made all the arrangements. One of my assistants accompanied me and would hand me the folder when I was ready. I got there early and gave the hostess a good tip to seat them in a more private place. My wonderful wife knew I was out of town, and on the audio recording I heard her tell her boss that she was free Thursday night if he still wanted to meet. Of course the idiot did and excitedly said he would plan it. The PI agency installed software for me to add to Annie's phone to receive copies of her text messages and emails. 
The app also had a function to record any audio and upload it to a private server. That Monday, I received a copy of a text message he had sent to Annie that included the time he would pick her up, the restaurant where they had reservations, and for her to dress sexy for him. I spit with anger after reading that and the way my soon-to-be ex-wife had behaved. How dare this guy pick up my wife at my house? My plan was actually simple. Let the lovers get settled in with their first drink and then suddenly appear. At this point, I would begin my speech, which would end with a little threat and unexpected divorce papers. My anger and thirst for revenge was growing. I knew deep down that Annie wouldn't want a divorce because she truly loved me and the children. I knew that what I was about to do would crush her and change her life forever. I didn't care, and I just wanted her to feel a fraction of the pain she had caused me. Now some would say I should be lenient and get over it for the sake of the kids and our 15-year marriage. After all, it was just sex. Did I mention that I was an immature, jealous alpha male? There was no way in hell I was going to let some other man enter my wife and then keep her as his loving partner. As much as I loved her and as much as it hurt, I knew I could never again look at her or touch her the way I used to. I had eyes and backup on the scene, ready to alert me at a moment's notice. So on Thursday night, after receiving word that a couple in love had seated themselves and ordered drinks, I was ready to meet them face to face. I got out of my car, walked into the restaurant, smiled at the hostess, took a deep breath, and holding my anger in check, proceeded with my plan. A couple in love were sitting at their table, and my heart snapped when I noticed that my beautiful wife was wearing a sexy cocktail dress and her perfect breasts were on display. It really grossed me out as she had never dressed like that for me. Why? Why would she do that to me? I couldn't understand it. It didn't make any sense, and it was driving me crazy. She obviously wanted to be his favorite tonight and look sexy for her boyfriend, and it was pissing me off. I approached them from the side and snuck over to their table without them knowing because they were so romantically focused on each other. How cute. It wasn't until I pushed my chair away from a neighboring table that they noticed my movement. The look on Annie's face was priceless. Her look combined shock, fear, and guilt in a way I'd never seen before. Her beau had no idea what was going on, nor did he realize I was her husband. He just looked at me with an annoyed expression on his stupid face. And so it began. Hi, Annie, are you two having a fun date tonight? I asked with a wide smile. Honey, what are you doing here? I thought you were out of town tonight. My boss Jeremy invited me to dinner to discuss some changes in the organization. Please join us. Jeremy, this is my husband Luciano, she said in a loving and calm voice. God, she was so smooth. I had to admit she was cool and recovered quickly. The drink I'd ordered before coming to the table arrived and, ignoring Annie's lie, I proposed a toast. I ignored her question and with a disarming smile said, raise your glasses and join me in a little toast. Let's drink to an interesting night and a new direction. After my toast, I smiled and turned to her boss. Jeremy, do you know why Annie and I have been able to stay happily married for 15 years? Honesty and trust, it's as simple as that. Are you married, Jeremy? Of course, I already knew all about him from the report. Yes, I've been married for 20 years and have four wonderful children ranging in age from 5 to 13, and I agree with you, Luciano. Trust and honesty are also an important part of our marriage. I'm so glad to hear that, Jeremy. Annie, do you feel the same way? I asked, knowing I was putting her in a difficult position. Yes, dear, it was important to our marriage, she said confidently. After all, she had just said they were just having a business dinner. She had no reason to feel guilty or nervous. You see, Jeremy, we have an amazing marriage, and Annie knows how much I love her and would do anything for her as long as she remains faithful. I saw them both cringe slightly as I took another sip from my glass. I continued my game. So, how long have you two been dating? I asked carelessly with a wide smile. Annie was annoyed, tried to pull herself together, and resented me. Honey, this is a business meeting and you're embarrassing me in front of my boss. Please stop acting jealous. You know me better than that. Following Annie's lead, her beau took the opportunity to put me in my place. Yes, Luciano, this is just a business dinner. I needed to discuss some changes I was going to make and I needed to meet with Annie tonight. I'm sorry if you misunderstood, my friend. I would never go beyond my professional relationship, especially with a married woman. 
I tried to adopt an apologetic look and said, Oh, I'm sorry. So you've never gone on a date with my wife and this is just a business dinner? That's right, Luciano. There's nothing going on between us, my friend. Annie, is this true? Just a business meeting and you've never been with him or on a date before? I ask the question that will determine our future. Honesty or lies? What was it supposed to be? Unfortunately, I had already anticipated the answer before she spoke. Business meetings only, darling. I would never be with another man, especially my own boss. Now please stop acting childish. I'm sorry, Jeremy. My husband has a slight tendency to be jealous, but he knows how much I love him. I lowered my head, feigning submission, and said, Please forgive me. I'm sorry that I do feel a little jealous. I mean, seeing you in that sexy dress with that handsome man, I hope you can understand me. Jeremy patted me on the back, clearly relieved that I was fooled, and said, Luciano, there's no need to apologize. If my wife looked this good and was on a date with a strange man, well, I'm not sure what I would have done. Everyone relaxed, and I raised my hand to the man watching us from the bar. He understood my signal and walked over to the table. Everyone looked at him as he handed me a thick folder, turned, and walked away. I saw Annie and Jeremy look at each other questioningly as I opened the folder and started laying out the pictures on the table. Just before I put the first picture on the table, I turned to Annie and spoke in a quiet, sad voice. Annie, you know that I loved you with all my heart and would have given you the whole world. You took my love and all the years of our marriage and threw it all away. You hurt me deeply and I will never forget those videos and the things you said about me on the tapes. I will never be able to get them out of my head for the rest of my life. Thank you for this. The first eight inches, X ten inches picture I posted had Annie on her knees with Jeremy's buddy in her mouth, and then several where they were fucking in different positions. Annie awed and put her hands up to her mouth. Jeremy was pissed and wanted to know where I got the pictures, but I just told him to shut the fuck up. After I posted the pictures, I took the time to go through them and comment on each one. I said something like, Annie, you look so sexy with his buddy in your mouth. You look very happy in this picture. Did you like it? Annie was now openly sobbing and begging me to stop. The other tables were looking in our direction, and I tried to keep the volume down so as not to disturb the whole restaurant. Annie realized how bad it looked, and she only had one choice. I'm sorry, baby. Can we just leave and I'll explain what happened? It's not really what it looks like. I looked at her with a surprised expression on my face and asked very slowly, It's not what it looks like? Are you going to keep lying to me, slut? Before you do, you both should know that I have hours of video, audio, text messages, emails, and pictures. Annie, I have to say that after watching those videos, I never thought you could be so slutty. You have never shared this side of yourself with me, and it hurts. I have spent a fortune in the last three months to get this information, and it's all legit. So trust me, I understand. Putting the documents away, I said, Now let me explain why I am here and what is going to happen tonight. Then I handed Annie the divorce papers and said, Annie, it's over between us. You and your boyfriend have destroyed our marriage and my love for you. You have hurt me like I have never been hurt before and I will never be with you again. So you will sign this tonight and my fellow lawyer, a notary public, will notarize your signature. If you don't sign tonight, I will show all the XXX video and audio to your parents, all our friends, and your kids will know what kind of mother you are. I treated you fairly in the divorce, but the girls will live with me. There's no way my daughters are living with a cheating, slutty whore like you. Jeremy, my friend, I suggest you get your girlfriend to sign this before I leave. Otherwise, I will give copies of all evidence to your wife and your management team at work. When I'm done, you won't have a job, and I'll be sure to get your wife Sarah to kick you out and ruin you financially for a very long time. Now, I don't want to do any of that, so just convince her to sign the divorce papers, and then my soon-to-be ex-wife is completely at your disposal. I never want anything to do with that whore again. Those words struck a nerve with her. The thought of losing her daughters was something else she couldn't face. Tears streamed down her face, and her boyfriend looked panicked. Annie begged me to stop and change my mind. She told me the usual nonsense. It's not what it looks like. Let me explain. I'll make it up to you. It was just a mistake. Please forgive me. Blah, blah, blah. She ended with the words, Luciano, I love you and I don't want this. Please give me another chance. Ignoring her pleas, I stood up and said, 
I'm going to the men's room, and when I come back, I want the papers signed. If they are not signed, I promise you both won't be able to realize how much hell I will bring into your lives. I left Annie crying and her lover in a state of shock. I knew Jeremy would do everything in his power to get her to sign those papers to save his own ass. While I was gone, Jeremy spoke quickly. He knew there was no way he was going to let his wife and his co-workers see those videotapes, and he would do everything in his power to prevent it. He had to convince Annie to sign the papers. Annie, just sign them, and then ask him to hold them for a week to give you a chance to talk. You need to convince him that you love him. Tell him you'll go to therapy no matter what it takes, but make him wait a week. Tell him that this is the least he can do in 15 years of marriage for just one mistake. This is the only chance I see for you right now. I can tell you he's not fooling around, and if he has video and audio recordings, we're both screwed. I don't want a divorce, she screamed. Trust me, if you make him wait, I'm sure you can save your marriage. Think of the children. You don't want to lose the girls, do you? Tears came to my eyes again, and after a few minutes, I returned to the table. Well, have you signed them yet? With the saddest face I had ever seen, she looked me in the eyes and said, Honey, I'll do anything you want me to do, including signing those papers, but please give me a week before you do anything. Please let me go home with you and give me at least that long. After 15 years, please give me one week to be with my girls and talk. Please give me that much. I sat in silence and looked into her eyes for a long time, pondering her request. I gave in and said, even though you deserve shit from me for what you did and the way you ruined our marriage because of that asshole, I'll give you this. You can go home and you'll have a week before I hand over the paperwork to my lawyer. You'll stay in one of the guest bedrooms. I don't want you anywhere near my bed at this time. Now sign them so I can get out of here. She signed the papers and I put them in the folder, then got up to leave. Before I left, I took her hand and she smiled until she realized I was taking off her wedding rings. I put them in my pocket and then took off the ring I had worn for 15 years. I picked it up while she looked at it and tossed it carelessly into her wine glass. The look on her face gave me only a small amount of satisfaction, but when she started crying again, it made me smile slightly because I knew she was starting to feel my pain. I turned to Jeremy and said, Well, asshole, she's your girlfriend. Do whatever you want to do with her. I'm leaving, but remember this, Jeremy. You screwed my wife, ruined our marriage, and jeopardized so many things, including my children's love for their mother. Your ass is mine, and I have your balls in my hand. Don't mess with my head. You're lucky I didn't fulfill my original plans for you. It's not over between us yet, asswipe. You'll be hearing from me soon, understand? Jeremy nodded quietly as I loomed over him. Looks like I may have ruined their plans for the evening. I wonder if they'll still want to fuck after I'm gone. As I was about to leave, Annie grabbed my hand and said, Luciano, can I please go home with you? I just want to be with you, please. I yanked my hands away as if they had been touched with a hot iron and said, Fuck you! I don't want to be seen with a whore. Today you are his whore. I'll see you after he's done having you tonight or tomorrow. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. You have one week, you disgust me, and I'm ashamed of being your husband. Okay. Yeah, I was a jerk. But I really didn't care. I felt like I kept my jealousy and anger in check. I was proud that I was able to suppress all the rage I had built up. I really gave it a week. Let's take a look at how it happened. The next morning. I heard her come home about an hour later that evening, and to her credit, she headed straight for the guest room. She realized that there was no way I was going to have a quiet conversation with her that evening. We met the next morning in the kitchen when I came down for coffee. I was still in the mood for revenge, so I proceeded to play dick and said, Good morning, slut. How is my slut wife doing today? She cringed, lowered her gaze into her coffee, and uttered exactly the words that every cheating wife who has been caught cheating and wants to save her marriage. Utters. Honey, we need to talk. Look, there's nothing to talk about, Annie. I know what you did. I know how long you've been doing this. I know everything you've said to him about me and our marriage. I've seen you do things to him that you never did to me. I've seen you dress up for him. I know he's bigger and better. I've heard it a hundred times in your videos. You lied, covered up, cheated, and kept me fooled. I can't believe you were that stupid. If I don't understand something, then we can talk. Otherwise, I have nothing to say. I'm the fool, not you. I don't know why I let this happen. You've given me everything I've ever wanted, 
and I love you regardless of what you heard in those videos. You should know I never meant to hurt you, and I never wanted you to find out, she said with tears rolling down her face. That's exactly my problem, Annie. You never wanted me to find out. You wanted to keep it a secret and keep lying and fucking your lover behind my back. That's the real problem, Annie. I can forgive infidelity, damn it. We're all human and we all make mistakes. But this wasn't a mistake. You wanted it, and you wanted to keep it a secret and keep lying, cheating, and hiding your relationship. I love you, Annie, but as Tina Turner says, what does love have to do with it? My trust is lost and I wonder if I ever really knew you. How many other men have there been? How many times have you fucked your lover and come back to my bed? I'm so disgusted I can barely speak. Sobbing, she now understood how I felt and realized what she had done. She had no objections or excuses, but she admitted her transgression. Okay, I'm guilty and I hate myself. I've never had anyone else and no matter what I say, I know you can't forgive me for what I've done, but I don't want a divorce. I will do whatever you want me to do to stay in this with you. I think I need counseling and maybe we could go together to find out what's wrong with me. Please don't leave me. I was quiet for a while and then I said, Annie, you can go to a counselor and figure out what you need and I will support you, but I can't live with a woman who can leave me so carelessly. Your actions and what you said told me your true feelings, and I don't see how I can live with someone who has those feelings for me. I know there are other women who would be more than happy to be with me. You had your chance and you willingly took it. Enjoy your week here with the girls and try to explain why you're leaving. I won't belittle you, but you need to tell them you're leaving and why. In the divorce agreement, I gave you full access to the girls anytime you want, but they will live with me. If you continue to be promiscuous and set a bad example for the girls, I will make your visits much more difficult. Look, I will treat you better than you deserve and help keep your relationship with the girls intact, but I have two questions I would like answered. Listen to my questions and think about them before you answer. My first question is why? Why did you risk everything for this? My second question is, was it worth it? I called Jeremy the following Monday and asked him to meet me for lunch on Wednesday. After convincing him how reasonable it would be to meet with me, I explained to Jeremy how upset I was about him destroying my marriage and how he was close to getting kicked out. I then explained that I had a better plan for him. During lunch, I explained how many people were hurt because he seduced a married woman. I explained how I expected him to make amends. He was going to pay Annie's rent and car payment for the next three years. I felt he should be in some pain for his actions. I explained how this would work. I will send you payment information so you can set up automatic payments. This is your punishment, and trust me, you'll get off easy. Even though I broke up with my whore wife, I still love her and want her to be taken care of. Since you are the one who caused this, you will honor my demands. This agreement will help Annie get back on her feet after I kick her out. I don't care how you do it, but if you don't follow through, I'll make sure you lose your job and that Sarah finds out about your infidelity. As a side benefit, you get to stay alive. All this because you had to seduce a married woman. Assholes like you should realize that your actions have consequences. Why not court single girls instead of destroying families? That was a really shitty move, Jeremy. Epilogue I treated Annie well, let her visit the kids and kept their relationship strong. We remained friends, but she never returned my respect or trust. Jeremy made these payments every month based on my threat hanging over his head. Annie was never able to explain or answer these questions to my satisfaction. It was clear to her that her deception and lies were not worth it, and she regretted doing it but could not explain why. Now she lives alone, without a boyfriend, and without the love she once had. I could have destroyed her, but losing her family and my love was revenge enough. Even after her counseling, the answer to the why question still couldn't be explained. The best she could come up with at the moment was, I don't know why, it just happened. It had nothing to do with you or our marriage, because I do love you, and I was happy with our sex and our life together, but it was something new and exciting. I screwed up. I couldn't help myself. Annie, if you were happy, why would you dress up and wear sexy clothes for him? Why would you dress up like that and do things for him that you never did with me? Maybe if you had made that kind of effort with me, we wouldn't be in this position. It just happened is not really an answer. You did it over and over again, and each time you dressed in a way that turned him on. 
but you tell me you loved me. I hope someday you can tell me why. I think you owe a lot to all of us. For us husbands and boyfriends who have been cheated on, it seems like a mystery that can't be solved. Thanks to these two cheating couples, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to trust or fully commit to another woman again. It's sad, but it's a fact. Married partners need to think through their actions and the consequences they inevitably entail. The path of destruction left behind is more significant and lasting than the excitement of sexual fulfillment. Talk to your partner. Either share each other's needs or end the relationship, but betrayal is a painful act with lasting consequences.